I plead innocent of all charges. <laughs> A little more conversation with TalkingElvis.co.uk. Hello and welcome to episode 30 of the Talking Elvis podcast. The now monthly or every now and again, whenever we think we fancy it, show. I'm Vince Wright and who's with me today? And I'm Ian Gray. Fresh from the shower, he's back again. So yes, this is a... all good stuff. It was nice that I wasn't interrupted from the shower this week. <laughs> yes, ever so sorry most, about that. I, I, found, I, found the lock to the, I found the lock to the bathroom door. So that's... <laughs> Right, so I think uh, yeah, that went down all right. We had a few uh, weird, wonderful comments about that. And, uh, yeah, it was interesting, it, wasn't it? I, I think um, people were suggesting it was a rip-off of a TV show. I think any, any resemblance to Dallas was purely coincidental. Uh, news and views this week. Uh, you got anything from the LVC world in your life this week? Well, following on from your um, uh, watching of the Channel 5 UK uh, documentary uh, last week, I would thought, OK, I'll watch it and see what it was all about. And uh, I actually quite enjoyed it. It was um, I, I like I like the formats in so much that it wasn't chronological. Yeah. You know, it's sort of, you know, it's just flipped about a bit because, like, you know, we've seen all these programs, haven't we? It's like he, he was born in 1935 and he, and he then got famous in 1956, then he died in 1977. And that's the... That's that's what we get normally, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, so that was different. Um, I don't know where they get some of these so-called Elvis experts from because you know they've obviously just been given the script and say pretend you like Elvis, you know. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> they're on the books with Channel Five. You'll yeah. talk about everything. They would be talking about Mars bars on the next program. Indeed, they will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, we had we had the was it J D King that um, the Elvis impersonator with the skittles all over his white shirt. So, uh, oh yes, is he one of yours? Do you know him? I don't know him actually. No, he was I, one I, of the ones at one of the shows you've hosted. Or no, he's not. No, <laughs> um, um, I think I think he was a bit young to have Botox, but because uh, there wasn't a scratch on his face. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So it's, it's probably about 84 years old, but like, yeah, do a bit yourself, you know. <laughs> he looked very, very smooth skin there, didn't he? Uh, <laughs> a, lot of, was, a lot of concealer. Uh, yeah, I, I do apologize to uh, JD King if you are listening to this. Uh, it's it's meant purely in fun, and please do come onto the show and defend yourself. Oh, yes. if, if you can, you're, you're worth it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> um, I'd love to know what what um, logo on Tony Prince's shirt that they uh, they they whited out. I reckon that's got to be his DJ company. That's oh, all right, that's okay. all black and white. Is it DJs around the world or something like DJ that? DJ United, isn't it? That's when they're it. Yeah. they're all the old Radio One rejects that weren't locked up. Um, yeah, I was I was never a fan of Tony Prince, I have to say. Um, especially when he pretended to be Colonel Tom Parker one afternoon. Oh, that was the the um, uh, was that that thought, Lester. Uh, that, was, that was in Birmingham at the uh, the old powerhouse. The, was it the powerhouse one, not the De, the Montfort? All oh, right, the Locarno, the Locarno. If you want to go back, the Locarno. That was in the deck downstairs. <laughs> oh, down them stairs with the mirrors and all everything. Ooh, oh, ooh. proper nightclub. So uh, I, I was never a great fan, but um, Todd Slaughter uh, uh, did well. He, he he kept it on a level pegging. He you know he wasn't um, look at me. I am. I am. He was. Just I still like, think they could talking. have hosted that, couldn't they? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think I so. Mean, and that would be Todd, my second Todd, choice. Todd, yeah, Todd would be us would be first. Yeah, I mean, Todd looked uh, very relaxed and uh, and uh, and fit and well, didn't he? So um, that's good. So uh, I, on the whole, um, I enjoyed it. One or two factual in- inaccuracies, as we discussed last week, okay. uh, but you're always going to get them. And um, like I say. He, he, he did only buy one Graceland and not several Gracelands. So <laughs> uh, I, I put a comment up about there's no S in Graceland, yeah. and uh, Phil, you know Phil Donson, uh-huh. he, he said, "Yeah, there is. It's in the middle," and he spelt it G R A S E L A N D. Fantastic, what well a Phil. <laughs> yeah, good man. So um, yeah, sort of um, seven and a half out of ten for me for that one. That was that was all right. Not too bad. It, it, yeah, I still say the best thing was it was prime time telly for no yeah. apparent reason. Absolutely, that yeah. was that Absolutely. was the winner. Yeah, but you know, would we have been happier with on tour put on at the same time and just watch that? <laughs> <laughs> well. You know, when 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 you when you've seen everything, you're in danger of of just bypassing anything that comes on about yeah. an Elvis Presley documentary on the television, aren't you? So yeah, um, if there isn't 13 seconds of new footage, you, it's not worth watching. Yeah, so you've got you've got to you've got to take it. And and like you also said last week, that you know someone who's not an Elvis fan who's not seen all these clips and whatnot will have looked at that and go, oh right, okay, let's let's 
let's let's yeah. have a look at the music. So that was good. So that was good. It was, it was very positive. So I'm very, I was quite pleased with that. Would you? And here's the test for me. Mm-hmm. Would you put your hand in your pocket and buy it on DVD? Good, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tight. Oh, I, 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 I wouldn't even buy a second hand off you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I'll do a colour cover and everything. <laughs> uh, so, any other news? Uh, not from me. Um, I've had a very busy week, and uh, quite honestly, I haven't had even a second to myself, apart from Sunday night when watching football. So, uh, there we go. <laughs> so, I, my bit of Elvis news is, yeah. you let it slip last week on the show that you did a playlist uh-huh. Uh, on Spotify, I did um, of your ultimate Elvis scene. Yes, so uh, I was having a big clear up, a big clear out, a big revamp of um, of talking Elvis Towers, right? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, of the uh, the the office, the studio, you know, all all, all of the three floors. Um, and I had this on, and I just put it on, and yeah. I put it on as a shuffle. Yeah. And it's good stuff. I mean, it's Elvis, so it's good stuff. But it's interesting to see what what you put on. You know, why did you put that on and not uh-huh. that and things like, you know. Yeah. And my shuffle didn't play a 1950s for forever. I, I really thought, he's not put a single 50s on it. And then they all came together. <laughs> I was going to say, there's definitely some on there. <laughs> no, but I was waiting and I'm going, no, and it is. But I do think it says a lot about you. I think that um, you, you're very much you, you're, you, your prime is '60s movie soundtracks, isn't it? You love them, don't you? One hundred percent, absolutely. Yep. Um, and yep. that's not a bad thing. That's just a, an obvious thing. Looking at it, because there, there's tracks on there that you know I, I think, oh well, everybody likes that one from the film, yeah. but they there are there's some obscure as in there, and you go, that's good thinking. Um, Obviously, having confidence in there was 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 a must. We knew that one was going to be a <laughs> yeah. song of the shrimps in there. We knew Indeed. that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and the other thing was things that wouldn't have even got a look in on mine. Right. Uh, you you like your uh, your Royal Philharmonic orchestras as well. I I, I, I really do. Yeah, you I are a, you are a one for them, aren't you? I can't deny that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and then class, classic FM, you know. Gee, I I I go to Scala. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Get, yeah. Get, get you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I'm cultural, me. And I'll still get there going, hey, that was today, tomorrow, and forever, wasn't it? <laughs> <When they went. laughs> it was that beef oven bloke. Yes. Um, <laughs> excellent news. No, but a good, a good one because, you know, I listened to the Elvis radio stations and everything. And it was just nice just to have a, I've no idea what you're going to put in here. Yeah. And it was, it was a lovely day tatting about, you know, doing stuff with it just on full blast and singing and not doing justice to any of them was just right. Excellent. Glad you enjoyed that. Uh, like I, say, Thank I, you. I, I like, I like something which is not so much mainstream, but it's, I, I, I kick myself sometimes because, I should listen to a bit more mainstream, like, you know, the 40 greatest, because it's, it's blooming good stuff, isn't it? But, yeah. um, but we've heard it every five minutes on every gold station in the country. And and you think, oh, not again. You know? the, the DJ in me wants to, to fade. I ought to I ought to do a fade mm. because, you know, when it's like, it's Pope Saladani track seven. Yeah. And then it just cuts off. He goes, oh, one of my first. Re- <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they just go, oh, right. Fair enough. Because yeah. it's just the banded thing, but now good little playlist there. So how, yeah. how does how does everybody get to listen to that? You sent me a link. Is it just out there to search for it? You know. Uh, yeah, if you look for Ultimate Elvis by Ian Gray 007, splendid. Or, or just put in Ian Gray 007, then you'll see all the all the playlists probably that I've got up there. So uh, if anybody oh. wants to have a look at that, then please do, and uh, also let us know what you think and uh, put together your own playlist as well and. Uh, we could all compare. That'd be good fun. Do they have to send you a postal order? <laughs> I'm sure something will uh, come to some sort of arrangement. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Postal order for two shillings and sixpence, please. In, right. in, in, indeed, absolutely. Yes. Excellent stuff. So I think uh, onwards and upwards. Mm, yes. Um, what did we decide on the show this week? 
we were going to have a look at um, some of the books in both of our collections to see which ones we liked, see which ones we couldn't do without, see which ones were a bit throwaway, um, and all sorts. So uh, we're going to delve into our bookcases. Very good. Oh, oh, so in our usual top five kind of mode, plus honorary mentions, yeah, also absolutely. runs, yeah. and uh, and uh, the Library of Horrors. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, no idea what you're going to choose, um, but I would imagine it's going to be the opposite of what I choose. Yeah, well, let's hope so. <laughs> we do hope so. So, have I got to flip the coin again? <laughs> I've got a real coin this week. <laughs> well, come on then. <laughs> Tails. Yep, you go first again. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Every it's time. funny, isn't it? What's the chances of this? Oh, anyway. I've won it 32 times in a row here. We're only on show number 30. Yeah. <laughs> Heads I win, tails you lose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, what is... Yeah, hello, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. Um, I've done a top five, uh, these are my favorites, and um, I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, we will cross paths at some stage. Um, so I'll go with number five. Now, this is a book uh, released in 1997 by the Elvis F Presley Fan Club of Great Britain. Uh, it's funny enough, it was when, do you remember when um, Todd Slaughter uh, went off uh, to have some uh, medical procedures and he left Julie Mundy in charge? Oh, is that when he, did, he put his record out? He's um, um, take another little piece of my heart. Something like that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this basically is called the official Elvis Presley Fan Club commemorative album and the author is Julie Mundy, um, who was uh, president of the Elvis Presley Fan Club UK uh, for those, what, about 18 months or something she was there wasn't yeah. she and this was like a, a 20th anniversary um uh, celebration of elvis and basically it's a picture book there was there was like three or four uh pages of introductions and and a bit of history and you know and, and stuff like this and then basically it's an inch think book full of uh photographs from 19 well from the first photographs of elvis so the last photographs of Elvis, in, in, including um, uh, funerals and, and, and stuff like that. So, uh, it's... What's, what's the quality of the? Uh, no, not the Elvis quality, but the quality of the of the book. Is it? It is was it a hardback. Tenth... Yeah. Oh, it was hardback. All oh, right. It was, a, it was a hardback book. <clears throat> I it's, don't remember this one. It might. It it's, passed it's, me by this one. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not A4. It's, it's. I don't know what the size up from A4 is. Is it A3? Oh, I don't is know. it like the Grattan's catalogue? Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah but it's, but it's uh, like I say, it's an inch thick hardback um black and white photograph on the front cover uh of elvis from the 1950s and an excellent and by, and by the way so we're going to be mentioning these books what we'll do is that we'll take photographs of these books and we'll whack them up on the website or vince can you can put them up on social media or something yeah, uh, over the next day or two um just to see exactly what we mean I, I don't know whether this um this book is still in print um, but it was a first edition, nineteen ninety-seven. So, um, so, and it was an yeah. anniversary one, so probably a shorter run. Probably, run. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, Julie Mundy, the official Elvis Presley fan club commemorative album, and uh, very, very highly recommended. I can't. I think the prices of books were a lot lower back then. I think this one was like twenty-five quid or something like that. So, yeah, um, but you were, you could buy a house for that, couldn't you? Uh, yeah, pr back then you could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's my number five. <laughs> so, did you buy that at the time? Yes, I did. Yes, just on a whim, or did you have a look at it in a bookshop? No, not at all. Um, um, I was in touch with Julie uh, back in the day, and we chatted, and um, she said, "Well, this is this is coming out in a in a month's time or six weeks' time, or whatever." Um, so she's, I think, I, th I think she sent me, you know, just a brief overview of it um, yeah. over a couple of sheets of paper, and I said, "Right, fine, thanks very much." Once so, it's out, so once it's out, I'll have it. Yeah. Brilliant. So a pretty girl says, buy my book, and you just did. It's funny how that works out sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just you know, I, I, yeah, just, uh, <laughs> just thinking about this. Yeah, God, God. <laughs> how shallow are we? Oh, I'm sorry. Incredible. Um, <laughs> incredible. <laughs> do you want that one cut out? Just say the word, and I'll ignore you. Oh, no, right. just... <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm there to be mocked. Yeah. Sure. So, um, 
So a good one. And do you, do you find it, um, you know, having done the radio and the podcasts, is it is it a good source of reference? Um, not really, because it's mainly just, pictures. It's yeah, just so, nice to yeah. look at. Yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah, that, that's, there's no shame yeah. in that, is there? It's, Love, it's, lovely, lovely, glossy pages and, and everything. So, uh, yeah, why not? Just it's, it's it's a lot of these Elvis books. If you think about, it, are visual, aren't they? Because yeah. we we think we know everything anyway. But uh, um, if when you get books like that, and I've got two or three of these in my in my top five here. Um, they're basically visual, and they're they're great just for flicking through because we never get bored of those, do we? Not at all, not at all. Yeah. So I don't know that one, so I'm going to have to have a rummage because um, I know one time, and I, I may I may be jumping the gunner here, but I've seen books on your shelf that I've missed, and then mm, mm. I've looked looked them up online and gone, oh yeah, I can buy one for three hundred quid now. Yeah. Um, how, <laughs> how did I miss it at the time? What a price! Yeah. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> perhaps <laughs> I ought to have a look at that one. Hi guys, this is Jamie Kay from the Jungle Room Podcast, and you're listening to Vince Wright and Ian Gray on the Talking Elvis Podcast. I'm going to go back in go back in time uh, for for my number five, uh, and we're overrun with books, aren't we? From from seventy seven onwards, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, I collected all the Elvis monthlies, and you know, right back to the paper. Uh, Elvis specials right back to the paperback yeah. got a squillion of the Elvis monthly so you know I've got a, a, a million pages of my dog dreamt he was Elvis <laughs> um, I, I, and you know and Nixon saw him for the 85th time um, <laughs> articles which I loved and I read them all oh, yes, yeah. book wise you know proper books um, the first thing I really remember getting into was a, a biography and this is this came out in 1971 so it's not 1971 when i when i oh. read because i couldn't do joined up writing elvis a biography by jerry hopkins and this is the first serious biography you know you've had all these little flimsy paperbacks operation yeah. elvis a date with elvis and all this yeah, yeah. and they're very much the fanzine approach yeah this this guy brought this book out and, and, you know, he's been writing about popular culture for forever. American guy, um, temporarily based in London, editor of Rolling Stone. So he's quality. He's proper there. Oh, I thought I'd heard the name. I couldn't yeah. place it now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this book, well, it was a hardback. It's, it's a hardback. It's how many pages? It's like a squillion pages, black and white photos in the middle. Um, but I couldn't afford it. And I had this out the library in Stourbridge time and time again. Wow. Like so much so that at the back, the discography, I I photocopied them. I, I actually went and paid, you know, when you had to pay something like 15 pence a, a page yeah. to copy it. Yeah. I, 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 I photocopied this discography out the back because... Well, I, that's all I got. You know, I couldn't Google it, could I? Um, so this was how I started scribbling on this photocopy. It would smudge with the heat of your fingers, you know, the sort of <laughs> the old the old ones. Oh yeah, it's just a great book, but it goes up to seventy one. So it wasn't a, and then he died. Wow, that's it, um, no, that's 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 quite refreshing, now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. So I was reading it seventy seven. You know, seventy. Six seventy seven, seventy eight, probably when I was getting it out the library yeah. all the time, um, and I didn't buy it for ages till I saw it in a sort of junk shop or something, uh -huh. which is the the copy I'm holding up to the microphone here, right? As I can see, yeah, <laughs> quite quite right. Still got the slip cover on. The you know the photos are uh, that's funny. The photos are very good. I okay. just I've just flicked the book open, and this is genuine. That I've got a. Stourbridge News, and I don't know what the the lo not Stourbridge News predates that the County Express, my local paper. Yeah, I've cut out that the Savoy Stourbridge and the ABC was showing roustabout, and I didn't know that was in there. Um, wow. Now that is Saturday, January the second, nineteen sixty-five. Now why I was one. Why have I got that? That must have been in the book when I bought it at the junk shop, and I've never noticed it. Is is there an original uh, price in the book? Uh, being, being as it's nineteen seventy one, which is what what forty nine years ago. Oh, you 
good at the math. Uh, no, no, uh, there's no price on it. Well, three, okay. three shillings and sixpence. Um, <laughs> no, no, there isn't. That's weird. Uh, but oh, I probably paid a quid for it in the junk shop or something like that. Yeah. But I just loved it that it's it's the first biography. There's probably a lot of inaccuracies now that we look at it. But just the whole idea of, at the time, you know, when I was really getting into this, like you, you said earlier, you knew, you know, he's born, he's famous, he joins the army, movies, live, dead. Um, mm. And that was kind of, you've got no meat on the bones, had you? Yeah, yeah. So this was one, you know, to have, like, quotes. And, and I remember things in it like, that ain't tactics, honey, that's just the beast in me. And you go, oh, I want to... You know, oh, now yeah. we, if we haven't got a sound bite on your phone of that, you know, buddy, <laughs> just to be able to read it and go, I know that bit. Is it mostly? Well, um, is it mostly dialogue, or is it? It's got pictures as well. Uh, it's 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 a written biography, and then you know, every couple of chunks, there's a load of black and white photos. Yeah, they're not yeah. great. They are. There's nothing you know particularly rare. <clears throat> they haven't gone up to it. It's publicity shots, shots from the movies. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's it's. They've gone down the, the normal licensing route. They haven't sent a cameraman up and said, come and have a look at this. Uh, you know, you can see that you've got, that's the way it is filmed. So the latest pictures are all obviously from that. So it, it predates on tour, which wow. is a really weird time capsule. But yeah. I love it. He did, after Elvis died, he did write the, the last year's. Mm -hmm. um, so he wrote another one to it and I bought that in a paperback so I probably bought that the wrong way around I, I bought that one first because I'd read this one to death from the library uh, but there you go so my number five Elvis a biography by Jerry Hopkins excellent that's a really good one I like that a lot yeah <laughs> now um, my number four is is a book that I bought uh, in 1993 it was dated 1993 and it's, it's a, again it's a big old glossy hardback uh, book and by that stage in in my life I had not been to Memphis I had not been to Graceland so I saw this book in um, a shop in Devon I think it was I think it was like you know um, I was somewhere like Paynton or Torquay can't remember somewhere on the on the Riviera and um, it's just basically called Graceland, The Living Legacy of Elvis Presley. Now, the authors of this are Chet Flippo, whoever he is, um, Todd Morgan, who was the Director of Communications for Graceland from 1986, you've heard of him, and Gil Michael, who also played the violin and the steel guitar for the Bill Black Combo in, 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 wow. in his life. And basically, this is a great big glossy book of every single aspect of Graceland, including the floor plans, um, every single item that they that they have in the archives, uh, every single room and every single ornament in every single room. And at the time, that was so vivid and colourful because, again, we didn't have internet, so we couldn't just look at Graceland and look at pictures. Um, we had so we had quite a lot of pictures in things like Elvis monthlies and and various fan club magazines, didn't we? But um, it was it was it was not high quality. This no. was an absolute top draw quality um, uh, bio of of Graceland itself, if you like. To me at the time, that was just uh, fascinating because it, it because it took me into a world that I certainly hadn't been to by that well, stage. When did you buy it? What year? So um, it was it was published in 1993. I probably bought it not long after that because. At that stage, um, I was every time you go to a bookshop, you're looking at Elvis books, and I'd never seen this one before. And um, I think it was current or not far off it. So I, it was published ninety three. I probably bought it in and around ninety three, ninety four. I think um, again, it was a twenty five quid job, so a fair amount of money uh, back in ninety three, ninety four. And to have these glossy photographs, page after page after page, and again, it's it's bigger than A four. You know, it's it's one of those hardback glossy glossy things with a you know a separate sleeve on it as well uh does cover they used it? to call them coffee table books didn't that's they? that's it yeah exactly <laughs> exactly that and i've still got it it's it's you know it's as with a lot of my books it's in perfect it's in perfect condition still and it was a, a glimpse into the world that i've i was yet to see now i've been there two or three times already you know since then but yeah at the time it was a real eye-opener but, but like, i bet it's completely out of date now isn't it 
It's, it's actually not, because don't forget, you know, that house is stuck in the 1970s, isn't it? So, uh... But I wonder how much they've... It would be, be lovely to go around and say, did they move that vase and put this one in or anything? Well, what they've done uh, since since then, they've they've established the Graceland archive, haven't they? Yeah. And yeah. and so what they'll do, they'll take something out. For put a, a couple, yeah. Six, put a knick knack in six months, and they'll they'll store something else for six months and put something else in its place. So little things like that. Um, so yeah, but uh, you know, it's it's. The room, the rooms are the same. The rooms haven't oh, changed yeah, at, yeah. at all. So, you and know. with that floor plan, mm. can we go off and plan a heist? Oh God, yeah, yeah. How, how can we work out where Luke Skywalker can to fly and just get his way in? Yeah, um, I mean, you know, you know, Chloe from Twenty Four would have got those schematics for us easily. <laughs> you know, that's that's how precise these things oh, are. You know, so, damn you know. it. <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely. So we can we can burrow our way underneath there and uh, easily. Easily get into that, but it's a fabulous book. Uh, Graceland, The Living Legacy of Elvis Presley. And, and, of course, the title, The Living Legacy, is just that, because it is it is alive, isn't it? Yeah. And, and do you think, is that one that you refer back to a lot? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've, uh, I've since bought other, you know, the Graceland guides, because they change every time yeah. you go there. So you, so you buy one of those for $10 or something, don't you, uh, when you're there for the 13th time or something. Um <laughs> And so I've got one or two others uh, as well, just like that. But this is the most comprehensive. Yeah, and it's uh, the original book. one, isn't it? By it's, then, it's you know. absolutely first edition. Yeah, first, yeah. you know, first first print uh, of it. So uh, I'm really, really pleased with that. And um, again, it's one of those ones. Um, there's not much um, dialogue in it. It's it's basically a pick it up and look through it, and it's just you know, it's it's wonderful. I love it absolutely. So you you like books without. Without words. So I there's bet you're a, good at joining the dots and colouring in, aren't you? There's a bit of a pattern emerging here, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but give him the sports Argus and you'll read it from cover to cover. Absolutely. <laughs> now you take me back. <laughs> <laughs> they can look it up. They'll find it. <laughs> They'll find it, yeah. <laughs> what what colour? Um, right. <laughs> so, my yeah, number four. Right. My number four ties in with my number five-ish. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, 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 as a little, as a little nipper, I've got I've, I've you know I've got that book from the library, and I've got um, the Reader's Digest box set, Elvis's Greatest Hits, and there's a booklet in that, and it's a pamphlet, but it's a few pictures, and it's again mm-hmm. you start to put pick that, but I hadn't got the books, and then I found this book that had come out in '76, uh, the Illustrated Elvis by W. A. Harbison. And I got it in one of these remainder bookstores, and I got the little, the little paperback, the little, the small. Oh, okay. And then I got the A4 one later, mm-hmm. uh, but but my my small one, th- this was such a key book in my world because I've read, I'm read, you know, I've read the um, the biography, and then you're trying to find the pictures to match from this yeah. one. Yeah. And I haven't got my original little small version anymore because the spine just went. It was it was one of those that was just read to death. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the pages just popped. Um, so then I bought the A4 one uh, years later. Um, but again, you know, the quality is not great. It's some some copying of the generation of the pictures. So it's very very black and white. Um, but it, it did for me cover cover everything. So it was an essential part of my wicked youth. So this is um, a pre. 77 again yeah so, so you're talking you're talking you're talking live information here yeah so it is there so at least you've got your pictures from on two and a lower in this you've got mm. all the stuff going on there um i don't think it's probably the greatest write-up ever but but because there's such a lot of pictures in it it was things like pictures from stay away joe that i'd never seen yeah, because I'd never seen Stay Away Joe because it wasn't on the telly, mm. or Live a Little, Love a Little, the ones that were kind of obscuros. Yeah, you, yeah. you know. Um, but to then sort of to see why is this girl covered in paint, being rolled along the the wall in Easy Come <laughs> Easy Go? Is this a key part of the plot? Um, I don't know. I've never seen it. Um, so it was really weird, and you could just flick through and go in. Hang on a minute, Elvis's hair, it's the wrong colour. Oh, yeah, it's Kissing Cousins. Oh, now I know. Right, you know, 
So mm-hmm. it was. It really was the eye opener for me. It, yeah, it, yeah. It was the visual one, but it wasn't the big glossy plates because I still hadn't got into that world of of the glossy plates books. Yeah. Um. So that was that was uh, that was and really that, nice. And in all fairness, back in the seventies and early eighties, those type of books were really expensive, weren't they? Oh yeah, I mean it really yeah. was a. Um, way, out of my league. Oh, yeah. way beyond our price yeah. range, yeah, indeed. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, when that, when you know, I remember getting your fan club magazines coming. I'd go through. What am I going to buy? Mm. And you'd buy the latest bootlegs, and you'd buy the like the the, the fan club books. But when there was a, a Sean Shaver oh. uh, super duper book coming out, you went, well, that's that's you know, I don't earn enough. <laughs> So yeah, a lot of those yeah. things like passed me by at the time, but I yeah. still I still haven't got a Sean Shaver book, you know. I, mean, yeah. uh, I don't know whether you can still get them or not. I don't know. Are they changing hands at City Money? I suppose. Oh, but, yeah, uh, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. But, that, but but it was a you know of its time. But there were people who will have bought it, never opened it, put it on the shelf, and it's worth a fortune. Excellent. But Excellent. yeah, but it was it was great. It was a good book, and in both formats, and knowing that it popped. Because I'd overread it, I thought mm. was was great. So that's my number four. Excellent stuff. I I like that. I, I like the fact that you, you you're live and Elvis is still alive. You know? Yeah, they're not talking it, about him in the past tense. <laughs> y- yes, that's it. It is. It's the grammar. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, that's a good point. Well, well, yes. Well, then number three. Number three. Okay, this one's got a bit more writing in it. You have to read this one, which is uh, <laughs> which is good. But it's, I think it's apart from one of my also runs. This is the earliest book I've got, and again, it's an eight. It's in, it's in the nineteen eighties, nineteen eighty five, and this is called Elvis: A King Forever, by Rob Gibson and a fellow called Sid Shaw. Now you remember Sid hey, Shaw. Hey, <laughs> fluffy slippers. <laughs> yes, from Elvis Leo's fame. So on a rope. And yeah, that's it. And, and and this is the guy from which I from which I bought this this particular book uh, back in the day. And it was I think I probably bought it in eighty seven. You know when the uh, ten years after yeah. uh, thing was quite big in the UK, wasn't it? The ten years after thing. Um, I think I bought it then. Elvis King Forever. Now this book uh, is chronological, um, but you've got lots of pictures in it. But down the sides of every single page, there's a Let's just say, just pick a date, January the 17th, 1963. Elvis went to the dentists, and then after that, he went to the pictures to see Spartacus. Something, you know, something ridiculous like that. And it's got lots of these little <laughs> quotes all the way down the sides of each page. Some of it's historical. Elvis celebrated his 25th birthday by doing blah, 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 you know, going, yeah. to, going to the, yeah, the, the ballpark, whatever, you know, uh, you got, so you got lots of stuff like that. You've got lots of great pictures in it. Um, and also there's lots of quotes in there from, from various people like newspapers, um, especially regarding, for example, the 68 comeback special where the quote was, if I can remember off the top of my head, but looking at the book was, uh, the man they called the King reappeared last night and believe me, he is going to be big all over again. You know, little things like that. And it's like New York Times. Oh, things like that. And then there was a quote from Elvis. Um, you know, little 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 uh, anecdotes about Elvis as well. Elvis was on stage one time and he was throwing his scarves out into the crowd. And uh, he, he noticed uh, there was a like a, a nine-year-old girl or something he threw a scarf to who was mobbed by all these 20 wild women. And... Uh, he, uh, the, the story goes, according to this anecdote in this book, that Elvis just like stopped the music, stopped the show, and called, got the little girl up on stage and took a, a bra- you know, um, um, a necklace, a chain, off his own neck and put it onto the, you know, <laughs> the neck, right. the neck, the neck of the little girl, and said, "There yeah. you go, honey. You can nobody can ever take that away from you. Just, you know, just tell them Elvis Presley gave that to you, you yeah. know." And it's stuff like that, and it's and it's and I hadn't read anything like this because what I, what I read round about this time was all factual. Yeah. Rather than, yeah. an, rather than anecdotal, you know. Well, that's I think that's that's interesting with the choices of the it book. Was, it was a it was a fun book. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we haven't yet come across the eight million. My mate was Elvis books. No, not yet. No. Uh, yeah. So, well, uh, I'll leave that for a minute. Yes, um, indeed. Yeah, yeah. But um, this was a fun book. It was colourful. Uh, it had a fabulous picture of Elvis on front in a white suit from around about 67, 68, something like that. Um, 
Elvis a King Forever by Robert Gibson, whoever he was, probably a journalist, and Sid Shaw or Elvis Lee Yours, 85. I bought it in 87, I should think, and I've still got the original copy on my bookshelf. And it still gets referred to every now and then, especially when I'm doing stuff like this, because if you're looking for a specific date or something, you might just get a little bit of a, a nugget. Yeah, you know, I can so imagine uh, you, you, your radio shows, you, you milked it a bit. On, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It would have been great, it would have been great yeah, for that. It's absolutely perfect for that, to be honest. Yeah. Because you, you can Google these things, but they're still there's not everything's in one place, is it? No, it's not. No, and there's a this is this is a great book, and this is a slightly sh- smaller than the A4 size uh, paperback, um, but love it absolutely. One of my favourites, number three. Oh, <laughs> that is good. Yeah, we've had no clashing so far. This is really good. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm enjoying this. My number three, right. And my number one, two, and three, I've stru- I've struggled on which is which is the order. Um, I really am struggling because they are the three most the, the, the um, most important books to me from the Elvis time. Um, probably completely out of, you know out of date now, but but I didn't know which order to put them in. So I'm going to put them in the order I've chosen. Uh, which I'll probably disagree with this minute I've said it. So my number three is a little white book that uh, that came out. It's been many, many reprints of it. Now, it, it came to me from the fan club, and I remember getting the magazine and this little picture of this cover, with the, that's the way it is shot, of Elvis rehearsing, mm-hmm. and the book was called Elvis, the Recording Sessions. And it was by this guy... Who we'd never, I'd never heard of, called Ernst Jorgensen. Uh-huh. Now we now know he is, he is, you know, the, the, the Lord Almighty in yes. Elvis. World. All praise yes. to the Great One. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you very much. And if you can hear this and you want to come on the show, I think we might be able to find time. Um, <laughs> yes, so I, I, yeah. Indeed, but, we will. I mean, it's like he's probably going to replace uh, me with you. In fact, so uh, get I, replace, in I will replace me with uh, him. Yeah. I, <laughs> Uh, any day of the week. Good. So this book was well, I remember seeing it in the fan club magazines, and it was probably a fiver or something stupid at the time. Mm. Um, and it was a recording sessions book, and it was amazing. So you you had catalog numbers, you had serial numbers, you had matrix numbers, you had how many takes of things, but not as much detail as we know now. You didn't know every take of everything, but this was amazing. And this white book was then reissued with the red cover, and then I eventually even got the the definitive sessionology uh, sessionography, the reconsider hardback book, uh, reconsider baby hardback book, all of the same one where they just add, added a bit more because wow. legendary performer volume three had come out, so they got to put Danny in and things things like that, you know. Um, and I, over the years I had it, but I loved the format. And I've got loads of recording session type books now. Um, but that at the time was just wow. That was, it, it was just something very, very special. And I guess for a completist like you, that is just exactly what you need, isn't it? It was it was awful because this book, again, I don't have it in mint condition. Yeah. Because it was a workhorse. Yeah. It had me and my biro going, got that, got that, got that. Mm-hmm. And then I'd get me a little notebook and I go, well, I'm going to have to buy something to get Teddy Bear because I don't have Teddy Bear and I don't have Unchained Melody. And why haven't I got Wisdom of Ages? You know, so <laughs> I was crossing them off in this book. Like, yeah, yeah. So when I'd go out, I'd have this little little notebook that tallied to this going, well, you know, you've got to buy, you've got to buy Aram Scarum. So you'd end up at the record fair going, well, Here's the Guatemalan edition of it, and it's a fiver. Well, I'll have it. Um, and then I could tick off all these tracks out of my book. Wow. Fantastic. Um, and, you know, now when you can look at, um, what's it called, Flynn's uh, Elvis pages, and the recording sessions are just there mm. up live for you, and, you know, every time something else is issued, you get those two full starts and all that. Didn't have any of that. It was just nice and simple. Yeah, but you can't tick them off, can you? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
And yeah, then, you've you know, got to so, buy this album for the extra 13 seconds. And... How good was that? I mean, I, I, you know, I used to do the same thing. I used to sort of go to the, one of the record shops in the markets in Birmingham and just and and I'd, I'd monopolise the Elvis section for half an hour while I wrote down all the titles that he's got. <laughs> and, and, then, and then buy one. Yeah, yeah. Because you only had three pound eighty. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I had to wait then another couple of weeks until I saved up for the then I can go buy the next one, but then I'll tick it off the list. Yeah. You know, yeah. stuff like that. So yeah, that's 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 how we that's how we rolled, folks. We didn't have any online streaming services back then, thank you. Oh cool, no. So so uh, throughout the years, this one has, has always come. And and yeah, and you know, from this guy at work to RCA in you know, in Europe to to now be the guy sent all over uh, mm. America digging in vaults and yeah, he's, he's probably currently down a salt mine somewhere isn't he? yeah but he's just like everybody you know any, anybody who's anybody now with with Elvis has to talk to him doesn't it if you found an acetate in the in in a locked or locker that you'd found it be he'd be the guy that that listens to it and goes no it's fake you know he is he's He's my hero. I'm, I'm going to have to say it. And yeah. our friend, uh, my friend Henrik, actually did did mention it in when we were talking yeah. to him uh, last year, or earlier this year. Sorry, uh, crikey, that's been a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> Joe, it really has. Yeah. Two lockdowns ago, crikey. But at least um, I got to one Graceland this year. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and he said that he thinks Ernst was saying, you know, there's probably not anything left. You know, he's, we've got it dry. But like you say, if there's any doubt, he's the man, isn't he? Yeah, they, that, I mean that's the thing, isn't it? They're, if they were sitting on a, a tape of Elvis does Simon and Garfunkel, they wouldn't just go, "We'll wait, we'll wait." You know, that would be mm. out tomorrow, wouldn't it? The RPA would be on it, and they'd it, mm. it, it'd be number one. Um, so they, you know, they haven't got it. Um, but you know, if I can dream, blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yes, yeah, so that's that's pretty good. Uh, oh, actually, did you see an article online? I think it was in the Guardian this week. Uh-huh. Um, that there is now digital technology that you can make an artificial intelligence. You could make an Elvis song sung by a digital Elvis that is artificial intelligence. That it is not undetectable. But it is from Elvis's phrases and way he would do it. Um, it's, well, the devil's, and, it's the devil's work, isn't it? And any random song, not just an Elvis song. So you could have it. You know, so you want to, you want Elvis singing something. They can, they can artificially intelligence. Elvis, Elvis did sing something. <laughs> if he did something stupid, ah, ah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Oh right, so you can uh, you can so, see. Yeah, so that was a, so, that was so, a strange thing I heard on the news. Yes. So select select your template. So your template is Elvis. Yeah. Or it could be uh, Gary Barlow, or it could be David Cassidy. So select your template. So in this case, in our case, it would be Elvis. Yeah. And so then select song, which is Walking on the Moon. Yeah. Um And it would be Elvis singing Walking on the Moon. Is that what they're saying? Yeah, but we we already have him doing every breath you take. We, well, we do, um, and we know from a good source that was actually true. So, you know, he, <laughs> he, recorded it six, it. he recorded it six years after he died. Yeah, <laughs> and we played it on the radio <laughs> <laughs> many times. That's the one, <laughs> many many times. But it is a great little ditty. But I, I, you know, is, is this is that argument that we're off topic here? But that argument of artificial intelligence doing Elvis songs and being passed off as real versus, you know, artificial intelligence versus no intelligence and an ETA <laughs> doing it. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what, I'd be interested to uh, to see how that develops. I'd like to yeah. see something like that, to be honest with you. Because I, I, mean, I, like, I like music to have a bit of a life, you know, so... Yeah, but, but, but I, I don't know, you, I know, know whether... Don't. I don't know whether... I, I mean, I, I just like new artists. Yeah. I, you know, I don't need everything to be Elvis. Mm-hmm. If if uh, uh, you know if a country band is good now they're good, mm-hmm. and if a rock band's good they're good. Yeah. But yeah. you know I don't need to hear ev- everything revamped. You know. 
This is Henrik Knudsen from the Memphis Mansion in Randers, Denmark, and you are listening to the Talking Elvis podcast. Anyway, that was my number three recording sessions. Excellent, well done, excellent. Now, um, this one, this my my number two is the next one. This is my uh, uh, Bible, if you like. Oh, all right. This is the one I use for absolutely everything, from movies uh, <laughs> to songs to recordings uh, sessions. Uh, to trivia, to absolutely anything, and I and I, I I use it for this show. I use it for the radio show. I probably used it for discos and stuff that we've done in the past. Uh, this is a book from 1988 called Elvis: His Life from A to Z. Oh yes, and it's about two inches thick. Uh, paperback picture of Elvis from 1960 on the front. Uh, this is by Fred L. Worth and Steve D. Tamaris, 1988. Now I don't know. Because it's 1988, and we've had, you know, a long time since then. I don't know if this is still the definitive everything Elvis. But I'll tell you what, in a book, a book that's two inches thick, you're probably not going to be far off, even from a book from 1988. The, I mean, the, tr- the trouble will be the stuff that's wrong, isn't it? You know, the, the, yeah. the, the, the and, stuff and that probably... we thought was right for years and we found it wasn't. Yeah, but yeah. there's not going to be many of those things. No, and, and, and recording sessions and stuff like that, that would have been added to, as we, as we yeah. talked about in your your uh, sessions, recording sessions book um, by uh, Ernst Jorgensen. So that's, again, it's, it can only expand on, on subjects like that. But um, the film stuff, yeah, the movie stuff, I reckon that's pretty comprehensive. Um, Does it say because... Wild in the Country is in black and white? Uh, no, it doesn't say that. So that's wrong, isn't it? So uh, yeah. <laughs> because we've just heard new information about yeah, and, fl- and, and flaming star, you know. So uh, <laughs> yes. So <laughs> um, yeah. So um, yeah, I, I I love this book um, because it is still the book my go to book even now. Um, I've been using it for years. I swear by it. Um, we could go through it page by page if you've got nine hundred pages worth to you know to spare. Any, any time so and that's what it is it's nearly 900 or i think it's over 900 pages it's actually. one of those books though that I, I i'm i would imagine you could you could if you did a quiz you could fox even the great the greats here. oh yeah yeah because you don't know what happened on tuesday the third at four o'clock that's right yeah, yeah you know so um yeah, but i think that i think i loved it on the radio when we did today in history yeah i i love those bits and it's just lovely a coincidence. And this is what, we're, what I'll say about this podcast is we're having a bit of fun with it. I could spend all day posting on Facebook from that yeah. book. Mm. Uh, and it'd be really interesting, but I'm just too lazy. And go out and buy it yourself. All right? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a fairly cheap book when I bought it back yeah. in the day, 88. I think it was only about eight or nine pounds um, for a book that comprehensive. And I bought it in... Um, uh, a shop called Hudson's in Birmingham city centre. Yeah. Um, oh, that was great. In about half an hour before I went to do my shift in, in one of the pubs. So, yeah. <laughs> and who wrote it again? Who, who was the, the credit? Fred, Fred Worth and Steve Tamaris. Now, they've done other uh, similar books, bio books. Uh, I think they've done it for uh, the Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. I think they've done it for, um, I'm not sure if they've done it for the Beatles. They've certainly done it for the Rolling Stones, though. Um, I so, have got yeah, a, I think a that's, story that's, to tell you in a minute. Music journalist. So, yeah, I think um, the sources are pretty good, I think. I've got one of theirs. Really? And I'm going to tell you about it after because it's in my also runs. Ah, excellent. That's what we're right. <laughs> So, yes. So that is interesting because I'd never, till you said that, I'd never connected the two. Yeah. Um, ah, that's it. That's really interesting. And, and with this book, um, this book has been in your house. Or you've seen it when you've been at my house. Yes, and we've, I, 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 and, and we've been working on stuff. Is it a fifties picture on the front, sideways think, shot? I think, or something? Yeah, I think it's a fifty-eight thing. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, I, I, I think it's been a bit of a bible that one. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what number is that? Number three. That was that was my number two. That was your number two, right? So you've got one left, mm. oh. which you won't get. No, but but I, I, I've got a feeling that. You might be a little bit evil and put, put, we'll see. Right, so my number two. Okay. Now, my number two and my number one, like I said, with my three as well. Are, yeah. Oh, and I'm like, I've put that as number three. So which one do I stay? And I'm going to stick with this. 
because the one that is number one was the, like you said, the Bible. Yeah. So I'm going to use the. I'm going to do this one. This book, uh, this next one, is a 1983 hardback book. Mm. Mm-hmm. And and it's you, funny you said we're going to put photos on it uh, online. Um, when I got this book, it was probably one of the dearest books I bought at the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And being a bit of an, an anorak, <laughs> I covered it in polythene. Oh, good God. <laughs> and the original polythene is still on this book. So the cover underneath would actually be mint. It'd be really good. Um but I'm, I covered it. I can't believe I covered it, this book. But this book is called Jailhouse Rock. Mm-hmm. And it is a bootleg Bible. Ah. It, it is fantastic. The bootleg records of Elvis Presley, 1970 to 1983, wow. written by Lee Cotton and Howard A. DeWitt. All right. Okay, I don't know them. Nor me. A um, bit like uh, your others, that you know, there's this whole rock and roll reference series. Yeah, yeah. Now, this book, not many uh, illustrations other than album covers. It's all just the label, the record cover. There are the, these bootlegs that I've never, ever, still never, ever seen. Mm. But, yeah, these are the early ones in the 70s, like you said, when he was alive. These early ones here that you're not going to see hundreds of them turning up at the record fair. By the time I was buying the Audifon ones, there's hundreds of them, wasn't there? Mm, okay, um, yeah. I've got a few of, of these bits and pieces, <clears throat> and I've seen some of them. But this was an amazing one, because not only did it have the track listing to everything, you could look things up alphabetically to see how many different bootlegs had, uh, I don't know, had almost on it and things like that. Yeah. So yeah. it was great. It's great. So the pages are really good, Nick, but it's obviously a little bit thumbed around the edges where I've, I've gone in. I didn't tick these off to say I wanted them, but I did make a list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I ticked them off the list. Um, so there was in- a lovely bit at the end of interviews and press conferences. So when I started collecting all of that in my vinyl as well. Yeah. And you started going, oh, I've got the 61 press, uh, 61 press conference. I've got the, the, the Vancouver press conference. You're looking at them here, the, the days gone by sets. Um, yeah. And I was buying all these at the time. It was just amazing. And, and I guess, and I guess with a book like that, um, all the songs that you hadn't heard, hadn't, you know, different version, whatnot. Um, they're, they're, they're currently been, ramped out in the fall of that dream series i guess aren't they because yeah of, i mean that's because really of the, it. because of the timing of the book you know 1983 like you say yeah when you've got things like lady loves me when you know you could only see it in the movie yeah yeah, uh, yeah. you know but somebody recorded it on a tuesday afternoon and put yeah. it on a single yeah. um you know people would go wild for this because it wasn't going to be something you everybody could just record yeah I, i've got um you know i used to record Elvis movies off TV but I wasn't technical and enough to wire it in I just had the microphone next to the telly going shh <laughs> <laughs> somebody come in closer don't close the door yes. <laughs> don't slam the door I've got some of me that I must play on one of the days because I must have me dad going oh he's at it again <laughs> <laughs> you've just said halfway through burning love I'm trying to tape um, yeah. Uh, yeah so so this this was it was great, but when I found out that he'd had all these press conference albums and eight millimeter film lists in it, mm-hmm. and then for, foreign bootlegs and Russian bizarre little releases, um, it was just great. And you you just get, I just had to have it. This was just how I collected. But the book is here. It's a hardback, um, a weird orangey cover. Covered beautifully with my polythene because I was an anorak, <laughs> and uh, and I still use it today. If I'm not just going to Google it, that's you know cool. what you know what this is the beauty of an actual physical book in your hands. They're not just for display; yeah. they're, there to, they're there to be used and to look be looked at. You know, for whatever reason, even if even if you're just thumbing through pages to look at pictures, you know, it's it's um, we shouldn't forget that and go all digital. You know. Yeah, no. I mean, the, the digital. You, you know, you lose your device. You've lost two hundred books. 
Yeah. It's going to be very tricky to, you know, you've got to burn your house down to lose 200 bucks. Indeed. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's that's the beauty of these. And I like, I like the fact that yours are, um, well, they're, they're very much earlier than mine, aren't they? Because yeah, little... they, they, they are proving one thing that I've just really started to notice. I'm very nerdy. <laughs> You said that I I couldn't possibly comment, <laughs> and you wait till I give you number one as well. I uh, mean, it just puts the cap on it. Um, <laughs> that's, I, that's, I, that's interesting, though, isn't it? Sort of having a, having a book um, f- f- full of stuff, which is which was not official releases. Yeah, I love that. That's that's fantastic. It's a fantastic um, archival st- archival stuff to have, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so are we, are, we, are we ready for number one? We are ready for number one. Well, I know. Um, well, I know number one. Well, I uh, no, no. Make it so number one. Um, um, you've you, you've probably seen it in my house. Yeah. Because uh, I probably can't hey, look at this. <laughs> and this is really showing, if not my actual age, then certainly my mental age. Oh, because God. because this is a book that just puts a smile on my face whenever I see it on the shelf and whenever I get it out of the shelf and start opening it up. <laughs> this is it's, it's another book about Graceland. Oh, and, it, and it's called An Interactive Pop-Up Tour. <laughs> it's a pop-up book. It's a puppet. Um... <laughs> it's a pop-up book compiled in 2006 by a fellow called Chuck Murphy. Now... It's obviously it's it's only got a, like it's 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 uh, it's probably about an inch and a half thick. It's probably only got about twelve pages in it because it's a pop up book. You know, <laughs> it's got a beautiful uh, sort of gold cover, Elvis in the sixties on the front, big old picture of Graceland on the front. Is it photos or drawings? It's Is it cartoony. Uh, no, and it's not cartoony. That's the beauty of it. You open it up, and Graceland pops up, and it's an actual photo of Graceland, but it pops up. And there's, oh, there's little God. things. There's little things on the sides where you can change it and stuff like that. Then you go to the um, uh, the, the, t- the television room, and so these televisions pop up. And there's a little wheel on the bottom of it where you can change what's on the telly, and you, know, you open up the side button. There's, uh, there's the bar uh, just before you, you know, be- behind the where the sofas are in the in the television room, and, and stuff like that. I, it's, it's, I'll tell you what, I bought it the first time I went to Graceland. I've not seen this. I've oh man, I must, I must have shown this to you. It's a fabulous book. I love it. It's just, it's so childish and simple. I absolutely adore it. And um, it's really funny actually because when I went back to Graceland a few years later, I, uh, I met up with my cousin there, and we go, we go through one of the many shops that are that are on the Graceland uh, concourse there, and um, you can buy your fluffy slippers, as Sid Shaw used to buy, and, and and all this sort of nonsense, and and it's a lot of let's face, it, there's a lot of tat in there, and. Um, she actually picked this same book up and she started going through it and she was laughing her head off and said, and she says, Ian, why don't you get this? It's really, really, really stupid and really sort of down your avenue. I said, Steph, I've already bought it four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and, she, and she's like the roll her eyes and going, yeah, yeah. Why, why did uh, I not know that? You know, um, but I, I absolutely love it. It's, it's uh, one of those genuine, simple things. And like I say, the things that pop up, are uh, all of the stuff that are, are is in 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 and around Graceland, and it's it's photographed. So the actual pop up bit of it when you open the page out is not a cartoon or a drawing of, just say, the Meditation Garden. It's actual photographs, and they've put it on these bits of cardboard that stand up when you open the pages out. That is crazy. It's brilliant. I, it's do you know what I need? I need you need to do is video this. Yes, and I'll put that up as well. Yeah, because that's, that's my intention. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I think a video, not just a pic, a picture won't do this one justice. It I need to not. see that opened and it pops up. Yeah, um, I'll, what I'll what I'll do, I'll do a, a few sort of thirty seconds. Um, yeah, send them over to me, and I'll put them on. I'll put them on the on the minute in, interludes um, because we don't want to be uploading too long a video. It takes. No, no, time. just do it yeah. over the week. Like that'd be great. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it'll, it'll be like uh, Graceland, page one, do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> when Tinkerbell goes, you turn over the page. Oh, the four, the four word is by Priscilla Presley as well. Now, let's have a look. I am talking, this was $40, 40 US dollars. <laughs> Indeed, so I, so I spent a bit of money on it. 
It is absolutely blooming marvellous. I absolutely love it. And like I said, there's... Oh, my goodness. You've got, got the little thing, the Tupelo house. There's a, there's a little photo album there of, of the Elvis family. When you when you actually see this, you're going to you're gonna go, I'm having one of them. Yeah, oh, go. yeah. I definitely think I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend... I'm going to take $40, especially with me, uh, just, just for that purpose, and, and I'm going to go and buy it. But, yeah, 40, 40 bucks, and it's wonderful. And it's still, you know, still in good cracking old nick. Um, there's plenty of writing in it, so it tells you uh, what's in the kitchen, what's in the living room, the music room, the home studio, uh, the jungle room, of course, um, exhibition rooms, which has changed certainly since uh, uh, since this book was published. Um, there's, actually, there's even a pair of Elvis sunglasses in there. You can you can open the page up, and inside there's a pair of Elvis sunglasses, and you can put them on and you can wear them just like I'm doing now, which you can't see, of course, but. Uh, I will yeah, do that. I'll do that we, for the video. We do need that for video evidence. Yeah, afraid, and uh, yeah. I, I think more than anything else I've got in this collection, than anything else that I've talked about um, uh, during this time, I, I think I think you're going to love this. I think um, it's 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 amazing. I love it. Anyway, it's called Graceland, an interactive pop up tour by Chuck Murphy, published in 2006. Uh, Forty dollars uh, from from Graceland itself. There we go. That so was your a, number one. Yeah, yeah. Don't we do was that? that a difficult choice? Um, it was actually because, um, well, there's there's another couple of books on there which which is going to be also runs, but I didn't want to say nothing until you'd said yeah, you're, that's you're fair, number that's one. Yeah, that's fair so. enough then. So I think that'll be that'll be interesting to see that you've got it because you've gone from the heart, not from the brain, haven't you? Absolutely, one hundred percent on that <laughs> one. Yes, I have. I can't deny that. No, it's, no, it's, I, I think I think I have the heart. Well, I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've gone for pure enjoyment, and your enjoyment was silly. I've gone for pure enjoyment for my number one, mm -hmm. um, and this is the Paul Litcher book. So he did that. Yeah, obviously in Hollywood, that's all right. But the boy who dared to rock. Oh, right. Yes, I had this, I had this one. Uh, at, you know, sort of Chris Christmas time. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a big, beautiful, big, beautiful book. All those other books that I've had, this was like <clears throat> all, all of those in one. Mm -hmm. it, but but to a lesser, you've got a cracking little biography with loads of photos, again, all black and white stuff. What, what year is this? Uh, 78, is it? 78, I think. Okay. So it's, it's a post. Yeah. Um, but the bit for me was more album covers all every american release uh -huh. the singles the eps the lps the bootlegs the box sets the special promos but it's all black and white anyway um moving on all these so you get pictures of the labels you get the truth about me and these are these things that you know i hadn't had all those other books then so you didn't have everything but this was the reference book for me. And I, I I always referred to this as my Bible. Yeah. And like you'd said, and I always said, this was my Bible because it, it gave me the discography. It had some mm -hmm. sessions. Uh, it had the basics of the sessions in. It had transcripts from press conferences. It did have them on record. You could follow them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then the funniest thing is, um, on Facebook, oh, I don't know, a couple of months ago, I saw that um, Randers was going live. The Memphis Mansion was live on Facebook, uh -huh. and I know it's all done in Danish, so I, you know, I, I don't speak the lingo. So I, I put it on to watch for a minute, and he's there, and he's holding this book up. No. And he's he's showing this book, and you know they're they're flogging stuff on there and mm. talking about it. And it's all in Danish, and I have no idea what he's talking about. And I got on the Facebook and put on the comments. I said, "Oh, what a cracking book!" When I was a kid, that was my Bible. And then he says on the screen, "Vince has just written in and <laughs> said that this was a," and he has no idea that's what I said twenty seconds before he said it. <laughs> oh wow. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so people of a certain age, we all did exactly the same, didn't we? Yes, indeed. Yeah. 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 Oh wow, that's that's a great coincidence. <laughs> I love <Yeah>. that. <laughs> uh, that just, it was just it was just perfect that he said it because I just said, Oh, it's my Bible. 
as my number one, it was it was the collaboration of all the nerdiness that I mm. need. Yeah, yeah, um, that's good. It's it's just we, we come from slightly different angles on it, haven't we? So, um, well, you, it's you, it's you, proved you, that you, I'm a nerd and you're a child. I think <laughs> it's not much <laughs> not much hope for us too, is it? <laughs> uh, but that's good though because that's that's what makes um, these shows or when we collaborate on the radio shows um, so interesting because of the clash of of opinion. Um, yes. Not not the clash of opinion, but certainly a, a mix of opinions. That, that's and probably it's just the, the decent, better. Thing. It's the same result with a different angle. Because... Yeah, you can, you can, you can say to me, I can say to you, it's like I liked. How would you like to be? Because it was a nice chirpy movie song, and you, and you can say that was catalog number four two three five six one, yeah. recorded the seventeenth of February nineteen sixty four. And but I go, and I, yeah, I, yeah, but I, I, I'm genuinely impressed by that. <laughs> that somebody would know it. <laughs> I used to know a lot more than than I do yeah, now, it's yeah. tr- because I used to eat, sleep, breathe. I suppose, and I've, mm. you know, life got in the way a bit now. But but I think those those are, are, are great. That was the the essential book for me. Mm. There was one other one, more of a magazine pamphlet. Yeah. Uh, that I I think should should go in my also runs was the complete Elvis, um, and it was very much like those, but it had color pictures in. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was only like a, it was a glorified TV times, yeah. um, sort of magazine thing. But I was lovely. But again, that one got ripped to shreds because that were really was my workhorse of a book. Because mm. you know when you went into that one and you had to go, there's an extra verse in, in Love Me Tender in the film, yeah. and then it told you what the line was. So of course you're there going to your mates. I mean, it was a it was a boring thing, but I used to, you know, come up with a fact. Go, Hello, ladies, did you know there's an extra verse? <laughs> <laughs> Never got me anywhere. But so, uh, what have you got as, as a as, as a couple of your also runs out there? Yeah, your well, near misses or, or your absolute stinkers. Well, the first, I think, the first ones we we need to we need to acknowledge, and uh, you're you're probably going to have this on your also runs as well. Something that was very close, but you know. Um, the Trevor Simpson books, his songs of praise, Elvis, his songs of praise, um, oh, from 2016 and 2017, um, all of Elvis's gospel tracks that he ever recorded and a history of each of those tracks from their origins all the way through to, well, present day, I guess, yeah. by Trevor, by our friend Trevor Simpson. Very, should very good. do every track because it's not going to vary much now, is it? Mm-hmm. You know, and imagine if he could do the research on every. So, so do the the gospel, do the country, do the rock and roll. Well, do I, the... I I think oh, I think I that's I think that's uh, in the planning because if you uh, if you look sometimes in the essential Elvis Max, um, you'll have a thing uh, by Trevor Simpson like four yeah. or five pages, and he's he's he's, he's, done, he's done like four pages on such a night. Yeah. Stuff like stuff like that. So I think that's in his archive somewhere. But um, it must be. But it's, it's yeah, it's a really it's... good read, and for me, I have to read <clears> that <throat> and have Spotify handy. Yeah. Because I love yeah. it when they go. This was originally recorded by, and you go, oh. <laughs> and, 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 and and the knowledge that he retains in his head as well. Now I went through the first volume of of these books with Trevor on the radio show uh, two or three years back. And I, I, I picked out one, well, no, half a dozen of these songs, and he went into the thing, and he, and he, although he didn't quote the whole page to me that he'd written down in the he book, genuinely he genuinely knows it. And it's it? enthusiasm that came across, yeah. which was just phenomenal, and it was just superb, and uh, genuinely a nice man as well. And uh, he, he, he signed both of those books for me, which was absolutely lovely. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was really, really good. And of course, you had the the um, the CDs in the back of the. Uh, in, in the books, you know, so um, well, it's follow that dream again, isn't it? So, so that, that you know, that is that is top top notch. And it's funny that we we haven't really brought a lot of modern modern books in here. No. Um, I mean, I've just had the that's the way it is. Follow mm-hmm. that dream in book, yeah. And and the book weighs more than me, which is saying something. Um, <laughs> but but it but it is a, it's it's a great flick through book. Yeah, but I love it, and it's now, when I've got it, and I'm glad. But it, it, it it's never going to be that important to me, mm. like like those that I think we've talked about yeah. earlier. And and these these uh, these books by Trevor Simpson had the um, he had the uh, privilege of those being sold at Graceland as well, didn't he? So yeah. Uh, so but well, you know, you, you know the um, 
the British uh, HMV ones. The, yeah, uh, 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 I tried to get one of those, you know. Do you know what? I, when I ordered mine, he said, do you want that one? He mm. says, and I went, no. And I thought, what a proud... But it was I was spending the money, you know, again, on two big books. Yeah, because they thought, were about 50, 50 or 60 quid a piece, weren't they? Yeah, so, so you just yeah. thought, best not, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, and I really wish I'd got it now, the other one. <laughs> Because they're, uh, so they're, they're changing and silly money now, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. But uh, hey, yes, that's fun. So I think we both had that uh, those books on um, on on our on our lists somewhere. Yeah. Um, we haven't mentioned Elvis. What happened by Red and Sunny West and Dave Hebbley from nineteen seventy seven. Uh, that's on the bookshelf, um, whether you agree with it or not. It's, yeah, well, it's, I think that's an interesting one because it's, it's a, a historical book. While it's Elvis a pre-death. Is still alive. It's yeah. pre-death, so that's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you know, it's not the big lie that everybody thought it was, is it? In within with hindsight, yeah. Uh, from what we know today, it's really accurate, isn't it? Yeah. Which you know, you absolutely thought it was. It was mm -hmm. a myth. Um, talking of books that were scandalous. <laughs> Go on, I know, I know one of them that you're going to say. What's 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 our friend Albert going to uh, Uncle oh, Albert? Uncle oh, Albert, Albert. <laughs> <laughs> in the war. Um, <laughs> Albert, Albert, Albert Goldman. Goldman. Oh blimey, yeah. Albert I, um, Goldbein, yes. I, I think I read about three chapters of this book before I dumped it. I think. I dumped is usually the phrase that goes hand in hand with it. Do you remember when they were uh, ruffled off as toilet paper yes. at, at Hemsby yeah. one year? They were uh, indeed. Yeah. But I mean, he, he, he was one of those authors. It, what did he do? John Lennon. He did. He did. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Lee. But they're all the they're all the shock, shock, mm. shock, shock, aren't mm. they? You know, yeah. they're not. Yeah. Um, well, that was just how he made his money, wasn't it? So I think that one gets in there. You got a copy? I haven't no actually that that, uh, that that copy that I read or tried to start reading I actually got from the Lee library at the time. Yeah, uh, I, 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 di I didn't want to buy it just in case it was as bad as everybody said it was going to be. And when I've I started read reading it, it I, like I said, the first two or three chapters, and then I, I thought, no, I'm not having this. Yeah, <laughs> I, can't, I, I did. Can't. Uh, a, I probably would now if I had it with me now. I well, I, yeah, I suppose I ought to because I think I just charity shop. Yeah, you know, yeah. I bought it for ten pence, sort of thing. So it'll, put it on the shelf yeah, and it was it'll, done. It'll, It'll be out there somewhere. Yeah, so I, I think, I, I think I've got a copy of that. It'd be interesting to read it now, knowing what we know now. With, with the that sort of late seventies, early eighties, anybody who met Elvis wrote. <clears> they, yeah. we, we we had you know we we had my best friend was Elvis. We had um, I was his secretary. Was, I was his mate's cousin's dog sitter. Mm, uh, yeah. I was his uncle. You know everything there. Um, I've read a load of them. Uh, Becky Yancey's. Yeah, yeah I, I, uh, I got that. I got that. I, 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 got I, I, that. I, I read that one, and that was nice because it was from the inside. And it, um, it, was, it was genuine affection as well, I thought. Yeah, you know, I so. think so. And I've got my copy signed, by the way. So. <sighs> <laughs> but I bought mine at the time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've got the paperback and the hardback, bizarrely. Blimey. I know, just looking through, yeah. Yeah. It was just one of those things. I'd buy one, and, and if I'd find the other in a charity shop, and you go, well, it's a quid in it. Um, so I used to buy buy all sorts. I, I think that's 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 a very good honorary mem uh, mention. Yes. Um, yeah. What about the current uh, biographies? The most um, recent biggies. I I I read uh, Ginger Alden's one recently. Yeah, what uh, do you think of that one? Earlier this year, that was very, very. Um, it, it showed her to be very naive, rather than you know, and Elvis to be a bit strange, as as we know anyway. But um, but she no, was that was interesting. Key, you know, she, she was. was she was surely what she was, she was 21, 22 yeah, so, when, when when she yeah, was with so, Elvis. You know. Um, so that, uh, and that because it was the last six months of his life or last eight months of his life or whatever it was, it was very, very intense. I thought. Yeah. Um, incredibly frustrating, um, and. You know, you, you you almost wanted to never mind slap L, but you wanted to slap her as well. You know, it's it was, uh, it was, <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that was that was that was a, a, a decent one. Um, that was that was very recent. That was what, what oh, three four years old, I think, yeah. something like that. Well, I mean, she you know she was supposed <clears throat> to be doing the uh, she's supposed doing to be Memphis doing... this year, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, along with a lot of people. Yeah, as yeah. as as we were supposed to be doing the um, heading back to. Uh, 
uh, Randers in Denmark with uh, with Henrik to see Dave Hebler, who was oh yes co-author of Elvis. What happens? So hopefully that he'll he'll still show up next year. Um, I hope so. So yeah. So that's that's. I mean, I think Ginger Alden's is the most recent one I have actually. Yeah. Been. What did yeah. you like the last train to Memphis? Yeah, they're very good. Yeah, very good. Um, probably too much information for me, maybe. Yeah. You got to read I, it like you're reading a novel, haven't you, or something like that? Yes. You know? Uh, but but I do like his style. Uh, what's he called? Um, Peter Garalnik. Yeah. Garalnik. Yeah, and I, and he's done he's done one on Sun Records. Yeah. Um, which I've bought and I haven't, I haven't even you know I've looked at the disc. You know me. I've looked at the discography. Um, so uh, I, I haven't read that one as yet. So that will be one of I've, I've got to get because that's just fascinating. Mm. Um, are there any other books that were yeah, definitely there's, there's... worthy? Yeah, that's, there's, there's one uh, which is a serious one. Then I've got two or three which are not so serious, which I also love. But let's start with the serious one. And if you go back to episode one, boys and girls, of Talking Elvis, we talk about Elvis souvenirs. And this uh, the, the, the basis for that program uh, yes. that we did way back when was called the EPE Catalogue by Bob Pakes. And that's uh, something I picked up um, um, last year or the year before, I think. Uh, and that is a comprehensive guide of all souvenirs that is a of, of Elvis. Book. It's a fantastic book. It cost me about sixty pounds, and um, I, I love that book. That could have made easily made it into the top five. To be fair, um, I thought that would have been in yours. I mean, yeah, it's such a beautiful book, and and factually, it's right as well. It's, yes, it is. You yeah. know, you you need to know how much a beanie hat was in nineteen fifty seven. Yeah, 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 and uh, and like I said, that was the that was. Uh, 100% material for our very first Talking Elvis. Go and listen to it. It's still available. It's still available. It is, yes. Yeah, I did actually listen to uh, quite a few old episodes uh, recently. So, uh, oh, yeah. All, oh, that's yeah, cool. yeah, it's all good fun. I'm very egotistical. I like to know. Are, are we getting I'm, better or are we getting worse? Uh, definitely getting better, mate. So, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> What have you got? You got any other any others well, before before so, I, before so, I go to uh, ridiculous levels? Um, well, yeah, but, I mean, I I think the Elvis specials as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, I keep thinking I ought to just do one of those on a, on a, a podcast. I ought to go. I'm doing 1966 this week, or I'll read you some bits out. And you tell me what year it is. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. So I fancy it because they're on the shelf and they're doing they're doing bugger all, aren't they? Yeah. The, the only, the only one I I've don't got, go to them. You know. I yeah. Don't the go the only one I've got is the 1977 one. I haven't got any more than that. Ah, but which one of the 77 ones have you got? Uh, oh yeah, because there was there was a run printed before. Well, do you mean the seventy seven or do you mean the seventy eight? Oh, I oh, say, I'd have to yeah, go and have a. You're out the can of worms there. We'll do a session on that. Yeah, good right. chat. Good chat. Yeah. <laughs> um, other books that that I felt were um, were were kind of essential uh, was like other variations of recording sessions books. I think of the big glossy photo books. Mm. Um, all of these follow that dreams that came out uh, yeah, by yeah. David English as well. Like the follow that, uh, not follow that dream. What's it called? Um, uh, uh, change of habit. Yeah. Um, I would love to have them all. And I, and I didn't, uh, but I do like the look of them, but I do worry whether they are just shelf fillers. I would just put them up and I would never look at them again. There is that danger, isn't there? I mean, I've got um, probably about three or four shelves full of Elvis books alone. Um, in this house, as long as a ton of other books, but I genuinely believe that if I had a, a great big, huge house with a with a separate library, I would fill oh. it top floor to ceiling. Absolutely, with with with, yeah. with 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 anything that was out there. To be quite honest with you, you would, you really would, you yeah. really would. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've got a lot of the books now. Um, all these paperback biographies that I, yeah. I didn't bother reading are in a big plastic box under the bed. Yeah. You know, because I I don't need to see. Uh, Marty Lacker's book every every morning when I get up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I've, I've I've even got these these what I would call um, not comic books but comedy type of books on those shelves because they they make me laugh as well. Because I like you know we like a bit we like something that's a little bit out there. If you heard, you our, top, if you heard our top five move, uh, Elvis songs with animals last week, you'll know I'm a bit <laughs> out there. Um, so so this, this the first one is called the Elvis Sightings. Uh, that came out in 1993. Now, this it's only a small paperback book uh, written by Peter Eicher. Who, it's about stories about people who genuinely think they've seen Elvis in in and around. Yeah, they genuinely think that. You know, the, and and he says, and he's and he's got their circumstances. He's got where they were at the time, 
Um, some of them weren't even Elvis fans, you know, so they're not obsessed uh, by it. So that's I like I like stuff like that. I mean, and 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 it's it doesn't matter whether you believe Elvis is is dead or alive. It doesn't matter. It's just a funny book Do because you know, people love... because people in the book actually genuinely believed that they saw yeah. him. That's the thing. Well, this is just like your alien sightings and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. They love it. And all I can hear you when you told that story then was I could just hear the X Files theme. Absolutely, <laughs> it's, it's, it is. It is just that. The truth is out there. Yeah, indeed, it's just that. There's um, there's another one by Charlie Conley in 2007, which I bought actually when I was in in Ireland, uh, called In Search of Elvis. Now, um, this is a guy who who goes around um, looking at various people who impersonate Elvis. Or, oh, or, I'm sure, I'm or sure now, yes, I fell asleep then. Sorry. <laughs> or who write about Elvis, or who are Elvis journalists, or Elvis uh, archivists, and stuff like that. So it's very different. Or people who make Elvis statuettes in a in a factory somewhere. <laughs> for some reason, this book and it's it's and it goes around the world. So it's it's like a travel book if you like, um, which is which is just the funniest. <laughs> It's, it's, you have got a very eclectic uh, book. Like and that. I've saved the best one. I've saved the best one to last. Now, you know, those series of books came out, uh, cartoon books called Where's Wally? Yes. And you had to search for Wally in amongst so many different scenes of crowd scenes and all this sort of stuff, right? And I've got an identical one. And I've, and I've, I believe I've shown this to you in the past called Where's Elvis? Yes. Yes, and it's brilliant. It's you've you've got uh, a page of you know these you know these uh, these moody weddings where there's like thousands of moody weddings going on in one, <laughs> uh, and Elvis is one of the grooms. Uh, there's Elvis in the crowds uh, um, who are who are out to watch John Paul the Second, the Pope, <laughs> going, going around St Paul St Peter Square. Um, there's Elvis obviously in uh, there's one in Red Square where <laughs> they oh, the, the, the May Day parade. Um, another one, uh, just Elvis just basically sitting having a burger in a, in a restaurant, which is the funniest thing. It's all photoshopped, but it's tremendous fun, and and you've got to try and find Elvis. You, you've got him there. I'll tell you what, the, one of the best ones was he was there. Um, they've, they've got him in in the crowd at Bill Clinton's inauguration <laughs> for president of the United States of America, and he's he's actually it's like in the crowd at the back. <laughs> oh, excellent! I well, love we better move on before we get into politics. Indeed, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I love. It. So I, I like. I like a bit of different something you yes. know, different when it comes to Elvis as well. So where's well, that, Elvis? I think those those are interesting books, and we've got a, a good little selection there. Have, and and yeah. I think that there is no wrong or right again. Yeah, is there? Yeah, yeah. Um, the Albert Goldman one <laughs> did exactly what it said on the tin. It was a shocker, mm -hmm. uh, and it was out to shock, and it was out to get you to do this. Yeah. All the Angus Honours, all the like, uh, the Kiss and Tell books. I'm I'm a bit you know they're a bit ten a penny. I, I haven't read many of them late of the later ones. No. In the eighties, I kind of read everything, um, but now I think as as books go, there will always be a market for a new Elvis book, won't there? Yeah, of course there will. Um, there's always different photographs from different movies, different concert tours, yeah. all this sort of thing. And uh, yeah, we're still getting them, which is which is great because you know it shows us an interest, it shows us the market for it. Yes, but it, but is it is it uh, you know again who's buying these? Well, when when we fall off the end, yeah, it, who's, you know, yeah, when we were the we were the the youth of 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 the seventies and eighties, were, were we? When we fall off the end, are we, is that the end of the line, mm. or or are are twenty year olds buying the follow that dream books at seventy quid? Mm. There's 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 the rub, isn't it? Yeah. Probably not. So, books, are we done? Yeah, I think so, we're done. I think that was that was pretty good. I think we got more than that than we thought. To be honest with you, I think yes. And to quote the great Steve McGarrett, book him down now. Yes, I think we've done everything we can with books there. Um, well done, Art. Talk about the good times with Talking Elvis. Right, well, that's, that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed going through my bookshelves. I don't know about you, Vince. If, if, yeah. nothing, else, if nothing else, it's given me a chance to clean the bookshelves. <laughs> I'd forgotten things, and then to find a little newspaper cutting in the one is weird. Um but it, it, books are special. Books need to be there. Yeah. And do you remember that that episode of the Twilight Zone where Burgess Meredith never gets time to to read, and then it's the end of the world. 
Oh, great episode. But so, I always worry about that. What if I lost my specs? Yeah, yes. Read your books before the end of the world comes, folks. Uh, it's, it's a week on Wednesday, I think. Yeah. Um, Excellent stuff. Well done. Enjoyed that. And uh, Thank you very much for joining us. I think uh, it's interesting. Let us know any books that we didn't mention. Let us know if you agree. Uh, let us know anything. I've done um, another recording earlier today, which should be out. It's a nice, interesting uh, interview, which might become a bit of a series. Um, had a bit of a technical issue with some some stuff there, but I'm sure we'll get around that. And if you want to be on the show, let us know. Yeah, indeed. And look out for our pictures of these books and, um, of course, the video of my pop-up book. You're going to love it. That's it. Coming That's it from me. To a Facebook near you. <laughs> That's it from me, Vincent. Thank you very much, and uh, good night from me. Good night, all. See you soon. <laughs>